All right, and welcome to another episode of Black Renaissance. I'm your host, Kristen Ayers. We are always looking for new show ideas, and of course, we want you to pitch them to us on our Facebook page. It's facebook.com slash Black Renaissance KBCWTV, and you can see archives of the show as well there. Today, we're talking to two authors of books and a representative from an upcoming festival. First, I want you to welcome from the Ubuntu Theater Project, co-artistic directors William Hodgson and Michael Morin. Welcome, Hi. guys. Thanks for having Thank us. So much. Absolutely. I am so excited to talk to you about uh, your production of The Grapes of Wrath. Uh, I, first, I want to make sure everybody gets to see a clip of it here. Uh, this is a show that you guys are putting on right now that will run through the end of April. Let's go ahead and take a look at The Grapes of Wrath. Touch me. I'll hold up. If you don't touch me, that'll get me. All that long ago, there's a woman so quick with love that makes me scared. Makes me afraid of me. It's parted. I wish they could have saw it. I wish so too. They was too old. They wouldn't have saw nothing. Grandpa would have been seeing the engines in the prairie country when he was a young fella. Grandma would have remembered the first home she lived in. It was too old. It was really seeing the years. The root. It's Tom talking. John Steinbeck's great American novel put to the stage, and the first thing that jumps out at me, obviously, is it's a very diverse cast. So first of all, talk to me about um, just why it was important to take on this novel in particular and to, and to put the grapes of wrath to stage with this cast. Yeah, I mean, I, I think there's a lot of themes in The Grapes of Wrath that speak to issues that are happening now. Um, but primarily, to me, it's about a greater human story, a human family, and how is it that all these people can move together and, and maintain their spirit and their soul, and that actually comes out of being a family and, and what it means to be a greater human family. And so what we try to do is put on stage what do it mean for a human family to march and move as one and sing um, and sort of make their way across. And so this greater American story that we all think we know, we're hoping to sort of recast it as something that, it, that sort of is an American myth happening right now that recycles. An American myth happening right now. Uh, talk to me, am I saying it correctly, Ubuntu? Ubuntu? Yeah, Ubuntu. Ubuntu. What does it mean? So uh, Ubuntu is a, a shortened from a phrase, a Zulu phrase, and it basically means I am because we are that my humanity is tied to yours. And we thought that was a great concept and we don't really have a word that directly relates to that in English. Mm -hmm. So we kind of co-opted it for, the, for that use. And how does that, um, that proverb sort of play into this production? I mean, part of our mission statement is that we, we do exquisite theater to inspire compassion to inspire uh, two groups of people on any side of, of uh, a divide to kind of think about one another, think about how your humanity is tied to the other person in the audience with you or the other person on stage or whatever that may be. Absolutely. I'm excited to see this, just seeing that clip right there. I mean, it's obviously very weighty, heavy subject matter, but you talk about wanting to uh, sort of uh, bring this familiar story to the stage and, and, and help your viewers discover something they don't know. What do you hope that people take away from? Well, one of the things we do is our, our company is site-specific, so we use non-traditional spaces to bring these, these pieces of theater to life. Um, and hopefully what happens is in sort of the I am because we are concept that we, we enlarge our identity of, of who we are and seeing someone other than ourselves and go, ah, that's me, I feel for them, I want to walk with them, I understand their pain or their suffering, and that that inspires compassion across socioeconomic and racial barriers. You talk about the um, actual space where it's being performed. Uh, this is being performed in Oakland, correct? Mm -hmm. In a church basement. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Tell me how that, I mean, how did that sort of change the performance? Oakland City Church has been great. We've actually done another performance there. They have a, a sanctuary and a chapel space, and we're using like a big gymnasium space, which felt right for, for this show. They also run a soup kitchen out of there, um, and, and they do like a, a lot of activities through there, so it, it felt like the right house for yeah. this. Um, but I, I think that that's something we, we do this on purpose because not only does it add value to that building and say like, look, this is a magical theatrical space, but it's also like, it sucks to have to drive 45 minutes to see a story that's played by a person that looks like you when you can do it right next door. Absolutely. We have great theater in Oakland. <laughs> and, and that's got to be so, uh, just having it in Oakland anyway and, and, and having your pick sort of of this, this diverse cast, that, that was important to this particular mm -hmm. production as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, there, there's, there's sort of few, story, few stories, I think, that can encapsulate and be as grand and hold 
uh, a greater, larger humanity. And I, I think that Grapes of Wrath is one of those. Um, and we wanted to sort of problematize it and say, if Steinbeck was really earnestly, sincerely looking for a story that spoke to a human family, then what does that human family look like right now? And how is it that... So when you watch the play, logically, you know, that son is never probably isn't going to be the, the related son of that mother, but you're going to feel like it's a family. And, and that, I think, has um, hopefully a, a profound influence on an audience. And it's such a classic, it's become a part of American identity. And for us to say, like, oh, there, there's historical context. Black people were migrating at that time, too. Chicano people were migrating at that time, too. I feel like it, you realize that it's relatable where you might not have before. It tells the story in sort of a multi-layered, diverse reflection of what was really happening at that time. Yeah. And makes it so that people of all backgrounds can relate to it, I would think. Yeah, and, and I think it goes to this greater question of American identity. And uh, in one way or another, um, the migrant the migrant journey is sort of lives in all of us. And, and I think that that's something that we can all identify with and, and, and feel for. And for many of us, it's still happening today. Yeah. That's very true. Yeah. Um, I definitely remember uh, reading The Grapes of Wrath for the first time as a bored, you know, <laughs> checked out high school student. <laughs> but I will say that seeing it in, in that way, just even watching that very brief clip and, and looking at it uh, through the lens of just seeing people of color on there, I mean, it definitely sparks your interest in a much different way. Mm -hmm. So kudos to you guys for putting that on. I really look forward to seeing it. And you guys should, too. Uh, thank you, William and Michael, for inform more information about Ubuntu. You can log on to UbuntuTheaterProject.com. That's UbuntuTheaterProject.com. And this is going to be running through the end of April. Shows uh, on Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. We'll be back with more Black Renaissance right after this break.